it's good to see you again this morning. And uh, as we all know, this is the last Sunday of the month of August, and we are winding up with our theme for the month, Heaven Sent Duties. And what are our Heaven Sent Duties? We started in the first Sunday. Uh, God wants us to love Him, love God, and then love your neighbor. So these are very important Heaven Sent Duties. God has given and added to this is one more, love your enemies. So just to remind us, did we uh, continue doing that? Especially loving people we do not like or people we hate. That is very important. And after that, we started something about that entitled, you carry the ball. That means you take responsibility. Uh, it is a heaven sent duty, whatever are the things that must be done, and no, no one else volunteers to do that. So you carry the ball, like uh, we said in basketball, the, someone who is carrying the ball, you know, uh, is the one who dis dictates the direction of the game, and usually the victory of the team. So we must always do that. And then we also studied last week that as uh, part of our heavenly duties, we are people who stand in the gap, like Ezekiel. A gap means uh, something that needs somebody to lead, somebody to, to affirm, somebody to, to lead people. And so just like uh, uh, Ezekiel who, saw the, who said, about that, he was a man uh, who, according to Ezekiel in 22 verse uh, 29, there was a man that God has chosen among the people to build the walls. So as we do the will of God, sometimes we are like wall builders. Uh, in the Bible, like uh, Nehemiah, or like uh, the owner of the vineyard, we build walls. So that people could uh, uh, could stand on it and uh, they could uh, serve the Lord. Another term that the Lord has uh, uh, given uh, here in uh, in His Word is that someone who stands in the in the gap. You know, if a wall like in the olden times, the wall of a city is broken, so there is a gap there. And uh, when someone stands there in the gap, that means he is filling the gap. Feeling a need just like Moses, uh, we studied last week when he pleaded for Israel to be forgiven by God. And in fact, he said, Lord, if you cannot forgive Israel, you kill me instead of them. But of course, the Lord said, of course, I cannot do that to kill you. But uh, I will punish Israel, but I will forgive them after that. Paul also, you know, in Romans chapter 9, verse 3, said, Lord, uh, I wish I am accursed for the sake of my people Israel. So the same wish that Moses did was the z wish of the Apostle Paul. He said, Lord, if you could make me anathema, that means if you could send me to hell so that other people would go to heaven, I would be willing to do that. But again, is that possible? No, it cannot. Because whatever a man has committed against the Lord, the sin that he committed, he himself must be the one to, to face it. And uh, uh, Ezekiel said, this, uh, the man who stands in the gap, he does it in behalf of the land. In other words, in behalf of people who need the Lord. So we are people in the gap. And uh, in behalf of people around us, in behalf of the, our country, and in behalf of our nation, are we willing to stand in the gap so that uh, uh, we can fulfill what uh, we call in this month as heaven sent duties? So there are several things that I would like to take up with you again in connection with uh, uh, standing in the gap. That is the title of my message this morning. And uh, so two things that we will uh, briefly take up Old Testament uh, examples and then New Testament examples. In uh, the Old Testament, 
side. We uh, read a while ago in Genesis chapter 25. There was a special man, the servant of Abraham. Now actually in chapter 25, his name was not given. But uh, in later part of the Bible, it was referred to that the servant of Abraham was named Eliezer. It's a good name. Some men have been named Eliezer. And uh, he was sent to the home place of Abraham in order to <coughs> in order to pick up the, the bride for Isaac. You see, in all the times they do that. It's not in our time and in our culture today when you want to marry someone, you fall in love and then you court her. And then uh, you ask her if she's willing to love you and uh, maybe marry you. So that's our system. But in the olden times, some uh, 2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago even, uh, people, uh, the, the parents, especially the father, are looking for the bride, for the son. So this is what happened for Isaac. You remember, Isaac was the son of Abraham in his old age. Tiguang na siya, nakaanak pa siya ni Isaac. And so he sent Eliezer, his servant, to his home place. And uh, there, uh, as he went there, according to the Bible, uh, he prayed that the Lord will guide her to the woman that the Lord will give to be the wife of his uh, master Isaac. And according to the story, it so happened that he stopped by a well. But uh, in olden times, in the area of, uh, of Abraham, when you have a well, they don't have uh, a faucet or a pump. Baldi lang, uh, you lower down and then you get the water and then raise it up. It so happened that every family who goes to fetch water from the well will bring his own pail. So kung nagabot ka nga stranger ka, wala ka baldi, hindi ka kakuha tubig. And so while the servant Eliezer was there, he waited. And then later on there was a beautiful girl who came. And uh, we know the story. He, she was Rebecca. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, so according to the story, she, uh, she f you know, the servant said, could you give me water? And so she, she dropped her pail into the well that was very deep and then gave water to the servant, to Eliezer, and then also gave water to his camels. And then uh, he asked, uh, who are you and uh, uh, who is, what is your father's name? And this is, was the time when he said, uh, it was Rebecca, and he said, uh, I am the, uh, the, the born of Bethuel, the son of Milka, and the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother. So, relative the Aisila. So, the Eliezer was very happy. And uh, so, in that story, he went to the house and then expressed his, uh, uh, his uh, motive why he came. He said, I'm looking for the wife to be given to the son of Abraham, Isaac. That's why I came here. And said, uh, he said, your daughter, Rebecca, seems like a, a very nice woman. She's beautiful and uh, she's also hardworking. And uh, I would like her, as my master has told me, to come here and ask for her, hi her hand to be married to my master, Isaac. So, we read a while ago that story, and uh, here they said, okay, will you ask uh, Rebecca whether she would uh, be willing to do that? And uh, so th they asked Rebecca, are you going to, are you willing to go to the house of Abraham, your uncle, and marry his son, Isaac? So that's a very nice way of courting, diba? Di ka na magproblema like in our time today ang lalaki mangutmulitao ka pa sudugay pa magtext ka pa now in our time magsulat ka pa letter 
Karon easier na lang no kay mag text text na lang. No? But even then you still have to visit. Mag advice ka pa nga. Okay, we'll have lunch or mag snack tayo or mag uh, attend sa conference or whatever. And then uh, you express your your feelings and then you ask for her hand. So that's how it is. But uh, in the time, ula na courting courting, di ba? Ang servant na na arrange so dadoon na lang sa imo ang imong ang babae nga asawahon mo well problema well you did not really have a problem kay basin bati ang nawong ba or bati ang karakter o di kaganahan sa so, during that time wala na na problema it's up for you to settle the problem once you are already married if married that means you you adjust to each other you learn to love each other uh, after the wedding so that was what happened and though it was a wonderful time they said the brother of uh, uh, rebecca will ask our sister what does she want okay are you willing she said they said to go with this man to marry isaac and he said i am willing and so they said i am going are you willing to stay with us for one more month to uh, celebrate your coming wedding and say goodbye to you he said no I have to go right away as uh, the servant has said and so he said okay we'll give a final uh, uh, feast for you today and tomorrow you can go and so you know the story after that day uh, the servant uh, took Rebecca in the camel for uh, the bride and took her home how many days did it take you know from their land to go to the uh, land of palestine or israel we do not really know but it so happened according to the bible that when they arrived it was late in the afternoon it's going to be sunset soon and then Isaac was there in the desert you know every day thinking and praying and dreaming of the woman that god will give him and as the sun was setting, there was a caravan that came. Camels. It was Eliezer and the servants of his father, Abraham, who brought the, the bride for Isaac. And so, Rebecca asked, now who is that man? Eliezer said, that's my master. And so, according to the story, Rebecca put on her veil. So that's why today when a woman is going to be married she puts on the veil and that's a very nice gesture some kind of romantic uh, uh, introduction to the wedding and uh, so she got down her camel and she was met by Isaac and the story was just very short no they got married that's all of course uh, in their time the, the marriage you know will take several weeks or maybe a month the, the way people are invited, especially in the case of Abraham, when he was a very rich man, it must have taken several weeks, and wedding celebration. But uh, yeah, the, the Bible did not bother about the celebration, but just the story that Isaac married Rebecca. And they lived happily ever after. Is that so? No, not quite ever after, because they had many problems also. But anyway, they married and loved each other and accepted each other. And uh, the other parts of the story are beautiful things that the Lord has given. We'll just ask uh, Isaac or the Lord to replay the story someday in heaven. We have eternal, all eternity to, to watch the wedding. Uh, the wedding uh, ceremony in a video there in heaven. So we have no problem about that. So that was uh, courtship in the Old Testament. That is just an example of a man standing in the gap. The gap. Now, who was the man in the gap? That's Eliezer, the servant. He was told to go to take a mission, to get a wife for uh, Isaac. That was his mission. So after that, there was no honor given to Eliezer. It does not even say there that they gave thanks to Eliezer. No. So he just fulfilled his mission, and that's it. So as people who stand in the gap, we fulfill our mission. 
We don't expect if the Lord will say thank you or say, okay, you're very good, I will reward you. It does not matter anymore. What matters is that we obeyed the Lord. So this story, you know, happened sometimes 2050 BC, so that's about 4,000 years ago from our time. And there's another story here in Second Kings chapter 11 in connection with this uh, topic of people standing in the gap. This time, it's about a woman named Jehosheba in Second Kings chapter 11. Now, this is a story. Uh, the, uh, the king died. The king was uh, the son of Athaliah. So you all know that uh, Athaliah was a wicked queen. She was not a believer in the Lord at all. And so when her, <coughs> well, when her husband died, she usurped the throne. And he said, okay, my husband died, so I will be queen. So it's the first time that uh, Athaliah did that. A woman did that in Israel. Because kings in Israel were men. But uh, you saw, so she, according to verse 2 of Second Kings 11, she murdered all the children of the king so that uh, there will be no one to take over the throne. But uh, this woman, Jehosheba, the sister of King Ahazara, and uh, kept, you know, the, the baby. The baby was named Joas, and she kept, she left, led and kept her, stole him, him from the palace, and brought her to the temple. So all of the childhood years of uh, Joas, she grew up in the temple. Nobody, not even the king goes there, so they did not hear that there was a baby there being kept inside one of the rooms of the, of the, the temple. And uh, so Athaliah did not know that, there, know that there was one more prince who was alive. And uh, the story goes, uh, after several years, Joas became eight years old. And on that particular day, the, they uh, planned with the armed forces, a kudeta, to remove Athaliah from the throne and Jehosheba helped by her husband, who is the high priest during the time, uh, put, uh, gathered all the soldiers in, uh, the, in the palace, and they crowned Joas king of Israel. And uh, this was led by the husband of Jehosheba, the high priest Jehoiada. So it was a very thrilling story. Uh, some th somewhere <coughs> it could be written for the books or a beautiful film story this uh, crowning of Joas so just imagine he was only 8 years old for us ang 8 years old today is about grade 2 or grade 3 kung ang anak mo grade 2 or grade 3 that was about the age of King Josiah when he was crowned king and he came to become a, a good king in Israel. And he was a famous king. So again, now the role of Jehosheba and her husband Jehoiada. What were they? They were a couple who stood in the, back, in the gap. There was wickedness. There was uh, somebody who usurped the throne. And so God's kingdom cannot continue because of that. But uh, they stood in the gap to stand for the, the prince who would soon be king of Israel. And they took care of him until he was crowned king. So it, was, it happened in 835 BC. That was about 2,900 years, you know, from our time today, 2017. So all these are examples. There are many more here in the Old Testament, people standing in the gap. So now we go to the New Testament. There are three people here I would like to present to you who stood in the gap so that the work of the Lord will continue. They, they obey their heaven-sent duty so that uh, 
the God's name will be honored and no one would, uh, would disobey him. <coughs> the first one here in letter A is Simeon of Cyrene. Do you remember who the man was? If you look at uh, Matthew 27, verse 32, you read uh, for the first time and for the last time the name of this man, Simeon of Cyrene. Matthew 27, 32. And they, this was during the time when Jesus Christ was uh, uh, arrested. And then he was uh, beaten. <coughs> he was mocked. And then they made him carry the cross to Calvary. So Matthew 27, 32 says, As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled this man to carry his cross. <coughs> Imagine verse 32, only one verse, to refer to only one man. He was never again mentioned in the Bible. But I, as I told you before, even if you are only mentioned once, but in the Bible, imagine that your name is written there forever in the Word of God like all the other nobodies in the Old and the New Testament like Simon of Cyrene. Just one verse for him, but was this, that was a big enough verse because if he is even greater than us because our, we are not even writ, written in the Bible at all except that some of us like me, our names are taken, you know, from people in the Bible. So see Simon of Cyrene, he was forced to carry the cross of Jesus on the way to Golgotha because he was not, I mean, Christ was not physically able to bear it anymore. Kan ba? Kapoy na siya, sakit na siya sa tanan ng mga bunal sa iya ha, he could not carry the cross anymore. Well, this is nearer our time. It happened, you know, the death of Jesus about 30 AD. So about uh, 2,040 years ago from our time today, 2017. But it is a very beautiful thing that happened. We know nothing more about Simeon of Cyrene, but according to tradition, uh, he was converted to become a Christian and he became a faithful believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. So just one verse for Simon of Cyrene. But it was a verse in the word of God. And it will be remembered forever. What an honor for a man like this. Uh, if I would like to imagine him as a big man of muscles. Of grabbing muscles, you know. Mura kwansya. Mura wrestler siya. Hard worker. So it was easy for him to carry the cross of Jesus Christ. Siya lang usaha, dalaya. So it was an honor for him to take the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. So truly, he was a man who st stood in the gap. Instead of Jesus Christ standing on the cross, uh, carrying the cross, he was the one who stood it there. But his testimony to be willing to bear the cross, to be wearing willing to bear burdens for the Lord is a challenge for all of us. So are you willing to bear a hard work, a hard assignment, a difficult challenge for the glory of the Lord, even if you are not honored, even if you are not praised by men, even if you are unknown forever, are you willing to do that? You stand in the gap, but whatever you do is counted, recorded by the Lord. Another one here brings us to Acts chapter 19. So Jesus died, he was buried, he rose up from the grave, and uh, the church of Jesus Christ started. So some time, five years after that, according to Acts chapter 19, there was a man called by the Lord to serve him. It, he was the persecutor. Saul, the persecutor. And uh, according to the Bible, 
uh, the Lord uh, met him in uh, on the road to Damascus and so we read here in Acts chapter 9 uh, the story Acts chapter 9 11 now this was after the converse, conversion of the Apostle Paul and while there in Tarsus uh, while there in uh, uh, the city of Damascus he became blind blind you know from the vision of the Lord and so he rested and according to uh, Acts chapter 9 verse 10 now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias the Lord said to him in a vision Ananias and he said here I am Lord and the Lord said to him rise and go to the street called straight and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul for behold he is praying you know the man Ananias he had an assignment to look for that house there in uh, the house called straight so even during that time uh, 2,000 years ago ang ilang mga, ilang mga city some streets are being named after important people so this one street was called straight we do not know why maybe it was straight nearly crooked but that's why it was named straight and then uh, in a house of a man named Judas now in the Bible there are so many Judas Judas Iscariot bad Judas but the other Judas like Jude who are good Judases so this time is this time it's Judas who lives in uh, Damascus whoever he was at this is important because upon the con conversion of the Apostle Paul he lived in the man in the house of the man named uh, Judas someday we will meet him again he had that privilege to to let you know the Apostle Paul upon his conversion to stay in his house and to the surprise of Ananias the Lord said the angel said he is praying he said, Lord, praying, isn't this man a persecuting, persecutor of Christians? Why is he praying? And the Lord said, I have called him to serve me. And I have chosen him to be the instrument to carry my name before the, get the Gentiles and kings and children of Israel. So that's in verse 15. So Ananias was surprised, but he, but he obeyed, and so he went to uh, Damascus and to that house of Judas in the street called Straight, and uh, and so he met the apostle Paul, and uh, he said in verse 17, "Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which." you came has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit so he touched Paul and uh, he could see again and then the Holy Spirit came upon him filled him you know just a few days after he was converted he was filled with the Spirit and according to verse 18 some kind of uh, scales fell from his eyes and he re regained his sight and then he rose according to verse 18 and was baptized Ananias had the opportunity to, ab to baptize uh, Saul who now became the Apostle Paul so that's another mission in uh, written in the New Testament the man who stood in the gap suppose I was an Ananias and then he, the Lord will tell me okay you go to baptize Saul and then said I will say no Lord why will I he's a rebel he's a killer of Christians maybe if I was the one I would complain but Ananias obeyed and he baptized the Lord Jesus Christ he was a man who stood in the gap willing to obey what God wanted him to, to do and it was a very very beautiful thing 
So one more story in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, I mean. The third one I have written here was Jesus himself. Jesus himself, someone who stood in the gap. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. According to uh, the notes that I wrote here, the Lord did the um, unpopular teaching about justice and righteousness of God. And so he cleansed the temple grounds of business people who sold oxen, sheep, and doves for sacrifice. Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchants. So that was written in John chapter 2, verse 16. This was at the beginning of his ministry. He cleansed the temple from merchants who were not uh, honest. They were not supposed to sell the animals there inside the temple. They were supposed to sell them outside at the gate of the temple. And, uh, you know, after three and a half years, the merchants again came back to the temple to sell their animals there inside the premises. So remember again the second time before the Lord was arrested, he went to the temple again and then rebuked the merchants there selling their animals for sacrifice. And again, he told them, take this away, do not make my father's house a house of merchants. So that's why today, uh, the church is a church and as much as possible, we avoid doing business in church because it is the house of God. So at the start of his ministry and at the end of his ministry, he cleansed the temple of the Lord from people who would, uh, would uh, sullen, would uh, give dirt to the worship and the spiritual condition there of serving the Lord. So it was prophesied in the Bible, as I already quoted here, in John chapter 2, verse 17, the zeal of my house has eaten me up. So what is it that drives Jesus Christ in his heart? Not only to die for our sins, but his faithfulness, his loyalty to doing the work of the Lord, his zeal for the work of God, for the house of God. And this is a very important uh, role that we should do today for us as Christians we should be people who stand in the gap for the church of Jesus Christ for the house of God and we will challenge people when they come here to worship and to obey and uh, follow what the Lord wants them to do so people standing in the gap are you doing that do you see any gaps in your family for which you need to pray or to supply that need? Do you see any, any gap in your community where you as a Christian is needed and are you feeling it? Do you see a gap in uh, the place where you work, in your company? And you are the one needed to fill the gap for the Lord. Are you doing it? Or maybe there's a gap in your church, in our church, or in your home place where you are, and the gap is a place that you alone can see and you alone can do. Are you willing to uh, stand in the gap and pray for people, pray for souls, pray for Christians, pray for the work of the Lord so that it will continue to grow? It's wonderful to be a man in the gap according to the challenge that is given to us. So we see that in the Old Testament. Now we see in the New Testament. Now we see in our own lives here. We have many people standing in the gap. And uh, I pray to the Lord until the end of our lives, we'll always be there standing in the gap. It's a privilege to fulfill a heaven-sent duty. So my question to you, what is the duty that the Lord has sent for you? Is it standing in the gap somewhere, whether in your place, the place where you work, or whether it is in your family or in your community? And you, are you now filling the gap? 
and uh, you will say, Lord, thank you, because you have called me to uh, stand in the gap, and I am not shying for it, from it. I am fulfilling it and doing what the Lord wants me to do. So today, uh, we have a special ministry for our singer, singers and our musicians. It's another way of standing in the gap. There's a gap for Christian music here in many churches in Cebu and province, and also uh, a gap in the hearts of many people, how to glorify God with uh, uh, songs of, of the spirit, the spiritual songs and uh, uh, the songs that the, the Lord is using uh, to speak to the hearts of Christians. So are you willing to do your part and do it well and give the best that you can for it? So it's wonderful that we are uh, given, this, given a challenge like this, standing in the gap. It is an honor to stand in the gap. It is a privilege that is not given to all people. And it is a wonderful opportunity that may never come again to you. So as you are given the opportunity to stand in the gap, stand there and do your part. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, thank you for this important challenge as uh, we continue to do the assignments that you are giving us. So even if we are giving this difficult assignment to stand in the gap between people and God, may we be willing to do that and do it well and do it with the power of the Spirit, with all sincerity and joy and let it bear fruit to fulfill what God wants us to do. So this is our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Like watchmen, we have the responsibility to 